وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in today's Friday night reflection we'll be talking about أحكام العشر من ذي الحجة والأضحية والعيد We'll be talking about three things, inshallah ta'ala. Ahkam regarding the ten days of the hijjah these ten days that we're in. And we'll also be speaking about the udhiyah, the slaughtering, the sacrifice. And the third thing that we'll be speaking about is the Eid. All three of them, we're going to mainly focus on the ahkam, the jurisprudent rulings, the do's and the don'ts, what you can and what you can't do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chooses days of the week and He chooses months. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ وَرَبُّكَ Your Lord, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ Allah creates وَيَخْتَارُ and He chooses. Allah chooses whichever day He wants to give superiority to. He chooses which month He wants to give sharaf and barakah. He does what he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the days in which Allah wa ta'ala chose is these 10 days that we're in. The first 10 days of the hijjah Allah chose them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He picked them. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih, and Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated in his sunan, min hadith ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said, Qala, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger said, Ma min ayyamu al-amal, ma min ayyamu al-amal al-salihu fihinna ahabbu ila Allah. There is no days which righteous actions are more beloved to Allah than min hadhihi al-ayyamu al-ashri, than these ten days. Faqalu, Ya Rasulullah, the companions, they said, O messenger of Allah, wala al-jihadu fi sabilillah, even jihad, the messenger said, "Well, jihad fi sabilillah, and even jihad, illa rajulun except a man, kharaja bi nafsihi wa malihi, falam yarjeh min dalika bi shayin." Even jihad, except the man who went to the battlefield and he died, and his wealth also went with him, meaning it perished. His wealth got destroyed and his nafs got destroyed. That that's an exception, but other than that. These 10 days are better than everything. So these 10 days, Allah wa Taala chose them. What are the things that we need to do in these 10 days? How should we deal with these 10 days? Number one, At-Tawbah As-Sadiqah. We have to come with true repentance. We have to, we have to repent to Allah wa Taala. The three conditions of repentance. and nadam that we regret what we did in the past. Number two, al-iqla'a, al-iqla'a min al-dhamb, that we free ourselves from that sin and we get away from it. And the third is al-azm, we make the unwavering conviction that we don't want to go back to that sin ever again. The second thing that we need to do is, we make the decision, al-azm al-jaddu ala ikhtinami hadhi al-ayami min al-ujur, that we make unwavering conviction that we are going to benefit from these days. We make that decision. We say to ourselves that these days we will make sure that we come with righteous actions, righteous deeds. We will do what Allah told us to do and we will stay away from what Allah told us to stay away from. And the third is Al-Bu'du Anil Ma'asi, staying away from sins. You stay away from sinning and shortcoming those are the three things that we need to do in these 10 days. I want to first answer a question which is why has, why has Allah, why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen these 10 days? 
Why has he chosen these 10 days? The answer to your question is in the following. Number one, and Allah Ta'ala aqsama biha, Allah swore by these 10 days. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He swore by these 10 days. إِذِ الْعَظِيمُ لَا يُقْسِمُ إِلَّا بِالْعَظِيمِ The Great One, Allah Azza Wa Jalla, He won't swear by something unless it's great. So these days have to be great. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He said, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشَرٍ And this is the view of the Jumhur Al-Mufassirin, the overwhelming majority of scholars of Tafsir. They held the opinion that وَلَيَالٍ عَشَرٍ is meant by the 10 days of Dil Hijjah. And it's the view that Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he said, Wa huwa sahih indi. According to me, Ibn Kathir said, Wa layalin ashrin. It means these 10 days that we're in. But when we were doing the tafsir of Surah Al Fajr, we strengthened the opposite opinion. But scholars like Ibn Kathir and others, they hold the opinion that Wa layalin ashrin. It means these 10 days that we're in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by it. The second reason why these 10 days are virtuous, that they are noble 10 days, is because أَنَّهُ يَوْمُ الْإِكْمَالِ الدِّينِ وَإِتْمَامِ النِّعْمَةِ It is the day when Allah completed the religion. And He bestowed His complete blessing onto His creation. قَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ لِعُمَرَ بْنِ الْخَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُ A group of Jews, they said to Umar رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ إِنَّكُمْ تَقْرَؤُونَ آيَةً You guys are reciting a verse. لَوْ نَزَلَتْ فِينَا If this verse was to come down on us Jews, لَتَّخَذْنَاهَا عِيدًا We would have made that day a Eid. There is a verse in your Qur'an that you are all reading. If it came down on us Jews, we would have made that day Eid. فَقَالَ عُمَرْ Umar said to him, إِنِّي آي لَأَعْلَمُ حَيْثُ أُنزِلَتْ The ayah that you're talking about, I know where it came down on. I mean, what it came down for. وَأَيْنَا أُنزِلَتْ And when it was sent down. I mean, where it was sent down. وَأَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. I even know where the messenger was when this ayah came down. حِينَ أُنزِلَتْ When it was sent down unto him. يَوْمَ عَرَفَةً it was the day of Arafah. وَإِنَّا وَاللَّهِ By Allah, I swear, Umar said, هِيَ بِعَرَفَةً It was Arafah. Sufyan al-Thawri, who is in the Senate, who narrated it from Qais, he had a doubt. Was it a Friday or not? But there's another riwayah, Hafid al-Hajr mentions, Fathul Bari, that Mis'ar, who narrated from Qais, that he said that it was on Friday. So the narration where Sufyan is doubtful, is eradicated, is ignored, because there's another senad, another tariqah where it came, where it's clear that it was Friday. So listen. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. That was the verse. This verse it came down on a Friday, which is the Eid of the week. And it also came down on the day of Arafah. And the day of Arafah, what's the day after it? Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha is the day. So what Umar was saying to him is, we don't need to make it a Eid. It already came down on two Eids. Because what the Jew man wanted to do to Umar was, he wanted Umar to do innovation and take that verse as celebration and celebrate it. But Umar radiallahu anhu was clever and he was smart enough to realize that he's not going to fall for that. The point that we want to take from this is, that verse came down in these 10 days. It came down on the 9th of the Hijjah, which is the day of Arafah. Are we all together, brothers? So this shows us the virtue of these 10 days. Also, the virtues of these 10 days, number three is, Al-Ujuru Fiha Muba'afa. The righteous deeds are multiplied these days. Number four, أنها الأيام المعلومات التي شرع فيها ذكره. It is the days where Allah legislated and prescribed for His remembrance to be done. Allah says in the Quran, ويذكر اسم الله في أيام معلومات على ما رزقهم من بهيمة الأنعام. 
ويذكر اسم الله they remember Allah في أيام معلومات prescribed days appointed days عبد الله بن عمر عبد الله بن عباس and جمهور العلماء the overwhelming majority of scholars they said that أيام معلومات here is referring to what these ten days of the Hijjah these first ten days of the Hijjah so this is the tafsir of Ibn Abbas and Ibn uh, Umar and the view that Ibn Kathir strengthened and Mujahid and Dahaq all of them they said it means أيام معلومات means what these ten days of the Hijjah number five the fifth reason why these ten days are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is these are the best days in the whole entire days in the world these 10 days these 10 days are the, the 10 best days in the world the messenger said this and Imam Al-Bazzar narrated bi isnadin hasanin and Abu Ya'la narrated it as well and Shaykh Nasir rahimahullah authenticated it and Ibn Hibban mentioned it in his sahih that he said that the Prophet sallallahu Jabir ibn Abdullah said that the messenger said أفضل أيام الدنيا العشر. The best ten, the best days are the ten days of the Hajj. ولا مثلهن في سبيل الله. There is no day in the cause of Allah equal to it. This is very powerful. That these ten days are the ten best days in the entire world. Number six. أن فيها يوم عرفة. The day of Arafah is in these 10 days. What do you know about the day of Arafah? The Messenger told us in a hadith by Imam al Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, Ahmad narrated in his Musnad, Tirmidhi narrated in his Sunan, that the Messenger said, Yukafiru sanat al Maadiyat wal Baqiyah. The day of Arafah, last year's sins that you've done, and next year's sins that you're going to do, you'll be forgiven for it. And Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, it encompasses the major sins as well. It encompasses the major sins as well. So it's the minor and the major sins will be forgiven for you if you do what we will talk about later about Yom Arafah. Yom Arafah, the past year's sin that you did is all gone. And the year to come, it's forgiven for you. The messenger told us the best dua that a human being can ever make the best one is on the day of Arafah. The Messenger said, خَيْرُ دُعَاءَ دُعَاءِ عَرَفَةِ وَخَيْرُ مَا قُلْتُ أَنَا وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحَدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ The Messenger said, خَيْرُ الدُّعَاءِ دُعَاءُ عَرَفَةِ The best dua is the dua of Arafah. The best. There's no dua like the day of Arafah. Then the messenger told us what is the best thing to say. وَخَيْرُ مَا قُلْتُ And the best thing I said, not only me, وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ And the prophets who came before me, the best thing that they said was, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ and Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrated it, and Imam Malik narrated it in his Muwatta, and Shaykh Nasir rahimahullah authenticated it. The seventh reason why these 10 days are virtuous is anna fiha yawmun nahar the day of nahar is in it and the day of nahar is yawmul ashir it's the 10th day of min min dhil hijjah the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look what he said about this day the prophet said inna a'zam al ayyami from the greatest days indallahi to allah azza wa jalla is tabarak wa ta'ala يوم النحر ثم يوم القر The best days to Allah تبارك وتعالى is from the best days to Allah تبارك وتعالى is the day of نحر the day of the sacrifice we'll talk about that in great detail soon inshaAllah تعالى and next comes what يوم القر يوم القر is what it is the day after the يوم النحر it's the eleventh day it is the 11th day of the Hijjah. And the reason why it's called Al-Qarri, it's يعني, يوم الاستقرار بمنا. It's the day where the Hujjaj, they remain residents in Mina. So ponder here and contemplate with me. In أعظم الأيام, the one of the best days, 
Is that day Yawmul Nahari and Al Yawm Al Qarri, which are part of the 10 days? Or oh, Yawmul Qarri is not, it's on the 11th day, like in Yawmul Nahari is. It's in the 10 days. Number eight, the eighth reason why these 10 days Allah gave it virtue over any days in the year is Ijtima'u Ummahat Al Ibadati Fiha. The mother, the mother of ibadat are found only in this year, in these 10 days. No other time in the year would you find the types of ibadah that combine in these 10 days, no other place. Hafid ibn Hajar, he said in Fatuh al-Bari, the second volume, page 534, he said, sababa fi imtiyazi ashridhi al-hijjati limakan ijtima'i ummahati al-ibadati fi wa hiya salat wa siyam wa sadaqat wa al-hajj wa yata'atta dhalika fi ghayrihi. He says, walladhi yadhar. Ibn Hajar says, what seems apparent for what for the reason why these 10 days were given the virtue that it was given over every other days in the year is the mother of ibadat are present in it and they are as-salah was-siyam salah this is the month these are the 10 days for which we'll talk about later inshallah ta'ala and the fasting and sadaqa the charity والحج, going to do Hajj. And he said after that, وَلَا يَتَأَتَّى ذَلِكَ فِي غَيْرِهِ And it's not present in any other time in the year other than these 10 days. These are the eight reasons why Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He chose these 10 days. They're not the only reasons, but some of the reasons. Now I want to go into Al-A'mal Al-Mustahabba, the rec recommended acts that a person should come with in these 10 days. Acts that I will encourage you all to come with. The first one, I already mentioned it before, but I'm going to emphasize it on it again. At-Tawbah, repent. Repent to Allah wa Taala and come back from your shortcoming and your mistakes. Ask Allah for forgiveness for everything. Because Ibn Al-Qayyim said, Rahimahullah, Al-Ma'asi sabab al wa tard Sins are the reasons why Allah wa Taala He distanced His mercy from you. He distanced from you his forgiveness. This is the reason why. What took us out of Jannah? Because Allah was disobeyed. Why was Iblis taken out of Jannah? From the gathering of the angels or sins. Sins, brothers, are sababul bu'di wa tard. The reason why you're distanced and you're chucked out of the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala. Wa ta'atu obedience is asbabul qurbi wal wud. It is the reason why Allah will bring you close and He will love you subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this month, sorry, this is 10 days, you work hard in repenting and coming back from your sins and your shortcomings and asking Allah for forgiveness. The messenger told us in a hadith narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, Inna Allah yaghar, wa inna al-mu'mina yaghar, wa ghayratu Allahi an yatiya al-mu'minu ma harrama alayhi. Inna Allah yaghar, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has protective jealousy. Wa inna al-mu'mina yaghar, and so does the believer. وَغَيْرَةُ اللَّهِ And the jealousy of Allah wa ta'ala is أَنْ يَأْتِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُ That the believer comes with مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْهِ He comes with that which Allah prohibited from him. Is it sensible to use the word jealousy for Allah? Is that a better, better translation? Huh? Huh? But you understand the meaning, huh? Protective jealousy, naam. The second thing that we need to work hard to do in this month, so these 10 days, sorry, is as-salah, praying. We need to pray a lot. Brothers, al-jum'ah, wal-jama'at, make sure that you come to the Friday congregation early. Make sure that you are there when no one is there. Make sure that you come to the congregation, takbiratul ihram, and you pray the salah with the imam. You come early to the masjid, you sit there and you wait for the salah. Make sure that after you pray salatul fajri, you don't move from your position, you stay there until the sun rises. This is days of righteous actions, a days where you exert effort. The third thing is ada'ul hajj wal umrah, that you do hajj and umrah in these 10 days. If you're able to, that you go and you do hajj and you do umrah. Number four is as-siyamu fasting. Al-Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih, 
on the authority of Abi Qatada and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the messenger said Siyam yawmi arafa the fasting of the day of arafa ahtasibu ala Allahi I hope from Allah the messenger said an yukaffira sanata allati qabla wa sanata allati ba'da the messenger said the fasting of the day of arafa I hope from it that Allah will forgive you for the year that passed the sins that you did and the year to come Allah will forgive you for both of those years the sins who from amongst us does not want to be forgiven who doesn't we all want it then this day is the day you need to fast so the fasting of, of these 10 days I've broken it into two if you can't fast the 10 days then at least get ready for your Arafah and fast on the day of Arafah and the second one is the fasting of all of these 10 days Hafsa she said and Imam Ahmad narrated in his Muslim and Nasa'i she said Arba'un four lam yakun yada'uhunna the messenger never used to leave it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam siyamu ashura the fasting of ashura wal ashra and the ten wa thalathata ayyami min kulli shahrin and three days of every month wa rak'ataini qabla al ghadati and the two rak'ah before fajr these four the messenger never used to leave it alayhi salatu wa sallam so we need to make sure that these 10 days, if we don't fast at all, what are we going to do? We at least fast the day of Arafah. Number five, at takbir wa tahmeed wa tahleel wa dhikr. We need to do takbir, say Allahu Akbar. We need to do tahmeed, say Alhamdulillah. We need to say La ilaha illallah. And we need to make many adhkar. Our mouths should not be derived from the remembrance of Allah. That's why Allah, that's why Allah said, wa yadhkur usmallahi fi ayyamin ma'lumat. In these 10 days, remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala. The men, they raise their voices. They raise their voices, but the women don't. And I'll expand on that later. The takbir that the person needs to say in these days, when you look at the statement of the scholars, is categorized into two. At takbirul mutlaq, the unrestricted takbir. And that is the one that you do في كل وقت every time من ليل أو نهار ويبدأ بدخول شهر ذي الحجة. It is the one that you do whether it's day whether it's night as the day that it's announced that the الحجة entered ذكر starts from your mouth especially the تكبير and it carries on إلى آخر أيام التشريق. It carries on three days after the day of Eid. You carry on and you don't stop. That's the general unrestricted تكبير. And then there's, there's a second type, which is at takbirul muqayyad, the restricted type of takbir. And this is the one that he said, yakunu aqib as salah. It's the, uh, the one that's done after the prayer. And what is chosen is that it's said after every salah, whatever salah it may be. And it starts in the morning of your mu'arafah. And it carries on until Salatul Asri, the last day of Ayamul Tashriq, which is the 13th of Dil Hijjah. It carries on. So it starts Fajr, Yawm Arafah, and it carries on to when? The last, uh, the day of the last Salah, for it is what? Asr. Maghrib enters. Like an Imam Shafi'i, he put Maghrib in there. Like what seems apparent is that it's not. The person should make a lot of dhikr. Well, it is recommended to say a lot of dhikr. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as Imam Muhammad narrated in his Muslim, he used to say, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّالِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيلِ He used to say to the people when he would see their mouths not moving. Abdullah ibn Umar would say to them, أَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ Increase in these days. تَهْلِيل لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر and Alhamdulillah. And Al Imam al Bukhari mentioned that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira, both of them would go together. They would both go out to the market in these 10 days. They would do the takbir. And the people will do the takbir after they hear them say it. But that does not mean that the takbir was all said once. It wasn't said in one voice. Raising the takbirah with one voice is not from the sunnah. And it's not 
transmitted from the Salaf al-Salih. But what it means is that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira would say it and it would remind the people and they would say it as well. But don't say it together. People should not say it together. And we are commanded to do it. Some of the Salaf, they believed it's obligatory to say it because of the statement of Allah, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ By doing takbir because of what Allah has guided us to, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَصِيغَةُ takbir. The form in which the takbir is done is in these three forms. The first form is, and the first way which you should, you should say it is, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Kabira. That's the first. The second one is, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. The third one is, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. The sixth thing that we need to do is, Kathratul A'mal is Saliha. We have to increase in righteous actions. These ten days, Go visit the, the sick. These 10 days, command the good and prohibit the evil. These 10 days, give sadaqah. These 10 days, keep the ties of kinship of your family. If you've disconnected your family, it is the time to call them back. In, this day, in these 10 days, voluntary prayers that you never used to pray. Number seven, and I'm gonna stand on this for a little bit. From the actions that we need to do that is highly recommended is al udhiyah to slaughter. And I'm going to speak about it in details inshaAllah ta'ala. The slaughtering is done on the Yawmul Nahar. It's done on Yawmul Nahar. And Yawmul Nahar is Awwalu Ayyam al Eid. It's the first day of the Eid. And then after that comes what? Ayyamul Tashriq. The slaughtering is also done in the days of the Tashriq, which is the second the third and the fourth day after Ramadan. This is the sunnah of our second and the third and the fourth day is Ramadan. So it's three days and Ramadan, so it's four days. So not Ramadan, Eid, Eid, Eid. So it's three days and Eid. So let me repeat. It is the second and the third and the fourth day is the day of Eid. This is the sunnah of our second third and fourth and the day of those are three days which are called Ayamul Tashriq and Yawmul Nahar four days in total this is the sunnah of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala told us فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعْهُ السَّعِي قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَلَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَر Nabi Allah Ibrahim came to his son Ismail and he told him that he saw in a dream that he's going to slaughter him. That he's going to what? That he's going to slaughter him. And Nabi Allah Ismail said to his father Ibrahim, Father, slaughter me as you were commanded to do. And so Allah told us that when he put his son down to slaughter him, Allah says to us, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah exchanged it with a ram. And that now became that became the slaughter and it started from there and our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was slaughtered and imam al-bukhari and muslim both narrated min hadith anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he said bahha nabiyu the messenger he sacrificed bi kabshayni amlahayni aqranayni dhabahu ma biyadi two goats or sheep goats goats who had horns he slaughtered them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his two hands. وَكَبَّرَ And he did the takbir. He said, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ وَوَضَعَ رِجْلَهُ The messenger put his knee on the animal. And he pulled the neck of the animal and he slaughtered it himself, alayhi salatu wa sallam. So it's a sunnah to slaughter. But the one who wants to slaughter, what is it that he needs to do? Number one. If you're planning to do the slaughter, what are the things that you need to do? Number one, if the 10 days of the Hijjah entered and you've made the decision that you want to slaughter, the 10 days of the Hijjah entered and you want, you've made the decision to slaughter, then you should not take from your nails, you should not take from your hair, whether that hair is on your face or your body. Based on the hadith of Umm Salama that is found in Sahih Muslim, إِذَا دَخَلَتِ الْعَشْرُ If the 10 days of the Hijjah entered, وَأَرَادَ أَحَدُكُمْ 
and one of you intends أن يضحي one of you wants to slaughter فلا يمس من شعره وبشره شيئا don't touch your hair and don't touch your body parts meaning don't touch your nails and don't touch the hair that's on your body second point this prohibition is specific to the person who is slaughtering not the family members that he's slaughtering on their behalf so the wife is allowed to cut her hair the wife is allowed to take from her nails even if her husband isn't allowed to because he's the one who's doing the slaughtering because the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith if one of you intends the one who's doing it and it wasn't mentioned on behalf of those who is doing it and so because the messenger didn't say it no one can make it obligatory on them that they have to keep their body parts or they can't cut no one can prohibit it from them number three anyone who takes from their body parts meaning their hair their nails their beard um, their nails their hair, anyone who takes from it deliberately, with no excuse, he does it. Then this person has done a, a sin, they need to repent, but there's no expiation. And they can still go forward in their slaughter. They can still go forward in doing their slaughter. Walakin alayhim tawbatu ilallah azza wa jalla. They need to repent to Allah by what they did. Number four is the slaughtering it's done بعد صلاة العيد after the صلاة العيد the messenger said من ذبح قبل أن يصلي anyone who slaughters before he prays فليعد مكانها أخرى ومن لم يذبح فليذبح if a person slaughters and does the sacrifice before the صلاة the messenger said then do another one after the صلاة exchange it with another one and if you didn't slaughter at all then slaughter the slaughtering is done in four days. Yawm nahar and the three days of Ayyam al-Tashriq. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, Kullu ayyam al-Tashriq dhabahun. The Messenger said, Kullu ayyam al-Tashriq dhabahun. All of the days of the Tashriq is slaughter. So Yawm nahar and the three days. This answers many people's questions. What about if I sent the slaughter to another country and they are slaughtering it and they're one day or two days after me, etc. It doesn't matter. As long as he's done what after the salah, it can be done in any of those three days. Okay? What sunnah? The sunnah is the person who the slaughter is, being, is doing it, he participates in the slaughter. That's the sunnah. Number six is it's recommended that you yourself do the slaughtering. You take the blade yourself and you try to do it. And you do the takbir. You say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Number seven, Wa ayakula minha shay'an. It's also recommended that you eat from it. And this is based on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith. The messenger never used to eat the day of Eid al-Adha. He never used to eat before he went to the Salah. He wouldn't eat. Alayhi salatu salam. And he would only eat when he came back. And he would eat from what food? The Udhiyah that he slaughtered. Alayhi salatu salam. So based on that, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and ibn al-Qayyim Zad al-Ma'ad, they mentioned that the Eid al-Adha, the Salah should be made one hour at least earlier than Salat al-Fitri. Eid al-Fitri. Because Eid al-Fitri, the people are going to eat enjoy themselves and then they're going to go out like in Eid al-Adha the people have slaughtering to do so it's recommended that it's what? that it's done early because people are going to wake up and straight away they're going to go number eight the slaughtering is better than giving money some people they give money to the poor and the needy the slaughtering is better and the animal is better because this is the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number nine, one goat will suffice a man and his family. This is based on the hadith of Abu Ayyub radiallahu ta'ala anhu lamma su'ila when he was asked, 
كيف كانت الضحايا على عهد رسول الله how was the the sacrifice at the time of the messenger فقال he said كان الرجل يضحي بالشات a man would sacrifice with a goat for himself and who and any baby and his family فيأكلون they would eat it ويطعمون and they would give others حتى تباه الناس فصارت كما ترى الإمام مالك نريتر استرمدي authenticated and he narrated in his sunan and also Ibn Majah وإسناده صحيح and the chain is authentic what about seven people and their families seven people and their families a camel or a cow a camel or a cow will suffice seven people and their families this is based on the hadith of Jabir Muslim narrated in his sahih حججنا مع رسول الله we did hajj with the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم فنحرنا البعيرة we slaughtered the camel عن سبعة for seven والبقرة عن سبعة and the cow for seven what's the difference between نحر and ذبح هيا هيا Nahar is specific for the camel and Dabha is what? It's for anything other than the camel generally. Number 11. What is the bare minimum? The bare minimum that a person can do if he has to slaughter. The bare minimum that the Sharia will accept from him. The bare minimum is مِنَ الضَّعْنِ مَا لَهُ نِصْفُ and it's the one they call al jadha the Arabs call it jadha if it's half a year, six months. The sheep, al-da'n. Al-da'n is what? It is the sheep that six months is the bare minimum that can be accepted from anyone. Okay? This is based on the hadith of Uqbat ibn Amarin. He said, ضَحَّيْنَا مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ We sacrificed with the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم بِجَذَعٍ مِنَ الضَّعْنِ A sheep that was six months. Number 12. What type of camel and goat and cow is allowed? What type of cow and camel and goat is permissible? The cow and the camel and the goat which is permissible is the one that the Arabs called Musinnah. Musinna. You can only do the, the camel which is Musinna and the Bakr which is Musinna and the Ma'iz, the goat which is Musinna. And what is that? It's the camel which is five years. The camel when it's five years, the Arab they call it Musinna. When the cow is two years, they call it Musinna. And the Ma'iz when it's two, one year, they call it Musinna. And this is based on the hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the messenger said la tadba'u illa musinna don't slaughter except the musinna illa an ya'sira ahadukum alaykum unless it's hard on one of you fatadba'u jad'atin min al-da'ni that when you can't then go for the sheep that we just mentioned which is six months then you're allowed or a goat that's six months you're allowed no problem but that's the, when there is a weak, uh, un, uh, you're unable to. Number 13. What is the best one for me to slaughter? Can you give us the order of the best to the lowest? The best is the ibil, it's the camel. Then the cow. If you're slaughtering the whole entire cow and you, you're giving it out, that's the best one. Thumma al are you with me? The dhan is, the reason why I said the whole cow, because some people they just take half of the cow and they leave the rest. No, it's all of it. And then the dhan, which is the sheep, and then the ma'iz, which is the goat. It is in that order. What about the characteristics of that animal? That it's asman, it's chubby. The more chubby it is, the more better it is. The more complete the animal is, and the more well-mannered that animal is. Meaning the whole reason why the Sharia wants is something you love to give it out for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala. Four things, brothers and sisters, لا تجوز فيه الأضاحي 
an animal that has these four characteristics, you're not allowed to slaughter. You're not allowed to sacrifice. And this is taken from the hadith of Bara'i ibn al-Azib. Bara'i ibn, uh, Bara ibn al-Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Bara'i ibn al-Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that the Prophet sallallahu said, Arba'un la tajuzu fi al-adahi. Four sacrifices are not allowed. Al-awra'u al-bayyinu awruha. A one-eyed animal, which is obvious that it's lost one of his eyesight. Wal-mariidatu al-bayyinu maraduha. A sick animal, which is obviously sick. It's apparent that it's sick. وَالْأَرْجَاءُ الْبَيِّنُ ضَلْعُهَا The third one is a lame animal which obviously limps. It's got one body part missing. It's got three legs. And number four, وَالْكَسِيرَةُ الَّتِي لَا تُنْقِي An old animal which has no marrow. It's old and the meat on it and it's very, very, very little. Those four, لَا تَجُوزُ فِي الْأَضَاحِي you are not allowed to sacrifice those four. What about al عَنِ الْمَيِّتِ I have a family member who died. I lost my father or my uncle or whatever. I want to slaughter on his behalf. لَهَا أَحْوَالٌ It has situations. الْحَالُ الْأُولَى The first situation is إِذَا كَانَتْ إِنْفَاذًا لِلْوَصِيَّةِ If you are doing a wasiya, meaning a family member died and they made it their wasiya, their farewell, that it be done for them a slaughter and you're fulfilling that for the person who that was dying or who died then then it's correct your slaughtering is allowed and the reward will reach that person who died on his deathbed he said to you slaughter for me and you said i will inshallah then this one inshallah reach the dead the second one is the second situation is a person goes and he slaughters and he says, I am not doing this slaughter or this sacrifice only for Fulan ibn Fulan who passed away. This one we will say, it is not permissible and it won't reach the dead because Allah said in the Quran, Everybody will only get what they worked for. And the only actions that the Sharia allow for you to do for your family that will reach them is what was mentioned. Okay? Number three, the third situation is the person he slaughters for himself and he slaughters for his family members and he also slaughters for somebody who died. So it's not specific to that person. Then inshallah ta'ala we will say, فَيُرْجَى We hope inshallah ta'ala that it reaches them. And this is the goal, these three steps was mentioned by uh, Sheikh Al-Allama Muhammad ibn Salih al uthaymin He has a book called Ahkam Al-Udhiyah which he mentioned it. رضي رحمه الله ورحمة واسعة. Now I'm going to go to the last point, which is صلاة العيد. صلاة العيد. صلاة العيد. What is it that we need to do? I'm going to mention eight things, إن شاء الله تعالى. First of all is التكبير. From the day of Arafah, in the Fajr of Arafah, until the last day of أيام التشريق. تكبير brothers. Don't stop the تكبير. Number two. الذهاب إلى مصلى العيد the place where the salah is being done go there ماشياً walking in تيسرة if you're able to don't drive if it's local the musalla is close to you then walk to it inshallah ta'ala walking is better number three the sunnah is والسنة الصلاة that the sunnah is that the salah to the eid is done in the musalla إلا إذا كان هناك عذر من مطر Unless there is a reason like rain is descending on the people, then it's permissible for people to go and pray, or it's then good for people to pray in the masjid, not to bring harm to the people as the messenger himself did, alayhi salatu wasalam. Number four, as-salatu ma'al muslimina. The salah with the Muslims, the person should do that. Rather, it is obligatory to participate in salatul eidi. It's wajib. And the evidence for it being wajib is, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ is a command and the Arab, the ulama they mention, sorry the ulama they mention وَالْأَمْرُ 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 تَقْتَضِ الْوُجُوبِ the Amr, it shows obligation وَالْأَمْرُ يَقْتَضِ الْوُجُوبِ the Amr, it shows obligation فَصَلِّ pray 
لربك وانحر. And this salah is talking about salah al Eid because what's been mentioned here is the slaughter, as you can see. And Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he used that verse and he argued that same point to show you that it's obligatory is even the women who are on their menses and that are on their postnatal bleeding are also commanded to what for them to participate uh, in the Eid. The Prophet said, Akhrijuhum, take the women out of from their houses, Al Huyadi wa Nufasa. The women who are on their menses and the women who are on their postnatal, bring them out. They're not praying, but they still have to come. So there's no excuse for not to come. Number five is Mukhalafatu Tariq. If you've taken one path, then take the opposite path. If you went on one particular road when you were going there, then when you're coming back, take another route, inshallah ta'ala. Alternate, change the routes. Number six, at tahniya Greet one another. That day, greet each other. Some people, they'll say to you, oh, do I know you? If you greet them and you hug them, they only greet those who they know. No, this day, it's a day that I don't need to know who you are. We're here together, we're gonna hug, we're gonna, we're gonna greet each other. وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرٍ And many other sahaba, they used to say تَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَّا وَمِنْكَ They used to say to each other. May Allah accept it from تَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنْكَ May Allah accept it from me and accept it from you. So they would say this to each other. So it's recommended to say, to say this to the person and to greet the person. Number eight. Sorry, number seven, right? Number seven. I'm only going to mention seven, inshallah. Number seven is the, re the person has to know the wisdom and the reason why this day was given to us. What was the hikmah why Allah legislated this Eid? It's for us to remember, the re to remember Allah wa that, that which He's given us subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which He's bestowed upon us. It is not a day where we disobey Allah. It's not a day where we listen to music and we watch films. We go to the cinema. And we disobey Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and we go against His commands. No, it's not. It's a day where we are happy, but we still remember that we are slaves of Allah and we stay within those boundaries. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu